we'll get into more so in the next segment, Iran and your work and how that inter- interacts there. Uh, but people don't often think of Iran as somewhere that is also happening, having an awakening of humanity. But Iran is experiencing it. Obviously, it's being experienced in full force in France, America, you know, sort of the, the leader on that Brexit. So this is a worldwide division between those who are awakened and those who are asleep, right? I think so. I think it's, I think it is, a, you could look at it spiritually. I don't think there's ever been a time in recorded history where we've experienced this, where it seems like in mass, the people are waking up to the tyrants. I don't think that's ever happened, at least right. in the past 6,000 years. Right. It's happened in individual places, but we really are seeing a worldwide awakening. I, you know, it's like, I, I keep referring to it as a worldwide civil war. because that's yeah. It's like all of these countries are experiencing this, uh, you know, fractionization or, or uh, fracturing between two sides. But these two sides are like the same in every country. Yeah. The globalist versus the nationalist or the, the humans versus the machine. I would say individual freedom uh, versus collectivism. Collectivism is just a mm. fancy word for enslavement, really, because uh, to not allow an individual soul to follow their own heart and follow their own path and form their own personal relationship with God and live their life accordingly is the ultimate crime, I would mm. say, to, to, to take that from someone. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I, it's so funny. It's like not only do do we hear at InfoWars like, I don't know. People accuse us of being being like in an echo chamber and stuff. But what I love about bringing on Infowars reporters like you or like Jake, it's like we all have different ways of looking at things. And that's what I so appreciate your view, because you always take this very spiritual view of. And of course, we have uh, David Knight. He always takes like the liberty. What's you know, he he breaks it down to its to its most basic uh, forms. Like, is it support liberty or does it bring liberty down? You tend to focus on or that's just sort of your mindset is you're very spiritual and you you recognize and can sense the spirituality that's being awakened here uh is that what uh brought you to to like doing what what we're doing here now or you know how did uh how absolutely does that, that comp- oh absolutely into it? um so i was before i came to Infowars, i was living a, at an ashram in a temple for about three years close to three years I worked at the ashram, and then from like 5 p.m. to 10 in the morning, I was the only person for like two miles living alone in this temple. It was extraordinary, and uh, I accomplished a great deal of you know, spiritual work and stuff. Uh, but near the end of that, where I guess you could say I found peace with my, within myself or whatever, that is when the next chapter started opening up. That's when I started seeing Trump fighting the globalists. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. From all over the world, especially to our friends in Iran, it is late in the evening there, uh, and we we welcome you and and thank you for tuning in. We know we have fans all over the world, and we do uh, love you all. I just want to say that outright. And so, Greg, what has been your journey through this this uh, interaction you've had with Iranian citizens, uh, these these you know Persians that have really gravitated to to your work just what has been succinctly your timeline and how this got started and where we are today well it's interesting because it picks up at the very last question you were asking the inspiration to come to Infowars, and so during the exact same time i was on my knees asking to um, somehow find a way to help out america in this incredible time or the world even in this incredible time that was around december of Christmas time of 2017 going into 2018. Around that same time, I remember the Iranian uprisings. Mm. And um, it was so moving, I guess is the word to use, inspiring. And the fact that the mainstream media was ignoring it, and it was, it, it, to me, that was one of the first times, this is before the, what we're seeing in Paris, and this is the first time I think I ever saw something like it where it looked like an actual authentic Everyone's up in the street saying we're mm. sick of this. And um, something about that just made me think, wow, Iran. And then I kept thinking about Iran. I kept thinking about Iran for all the way up until July when I started working at InfoWars. And then within my first month of InfoWars, I kept, I was still thinking about Iran. So I said, I'm going to do an article on Iran. And there was a couple of spies. They just came up in the news again. And after that article, I started getting uh, contacted by Restart on Twitter, hundreds. Um, to the point where I got curious and I was like, all right. So I started 
contacting him back, replying to him, and they started filling me in. And next thing you know, we went to California to interview their leader. And so, what what is what is Restart exactly for people that don't know? Restart is a populist movement in Iran that was started a few years ago by a Sayed Mohammed Sayed Mohammed Husseini who is used to be a TV personality. He's a bit like Trump. He's not a billionaire, but he was famous. He was a bit of a, he was a loved character. When the regime tried getting him to turn political, that's when he left and came to America and ended up forming Restart. And he was getting millions of downloads. He's a lot like Alex Jones as well. He's, he does podcasts out of California now, and he educates his movement like an InfoWars audience. I would say the Restart people are as educated, if not more so, than our audience. I mean, they, they're they they're keen. They know who to trust here in America, even, and who mm. the deep staters are. They know who the, the swamp creatures are. It's extraordinary. They're, in many ways, they're just like us, I would say. Uh, they're dealing with the exact same problems. Uh, they're getting censored in Iran as well. They call it Restart because they want a complete restart. They, they don't want to reform the government. They don't want any Islamic rule. They want separation of church and state. Mm. They want uh, freedom of speech. They want the right to bear arms. Uh, so they want a complete restart, drafting a constitution. I think they want five political parties to choose from. And they want to do it peacefully. They want to do it through knowledge and, and educating people. Um, at first, I I remember thinking you, in my head, I'm like, you can't do it like that. And right. I remember uh, I was contacting them. I was even... But that's what they want. And now that I'm seeing what's happening in Paris, I'm starting to, to question that now. Like, mm. if enough of us stand up and say we want this, then what are they going to do? What are how, they going to yeah, do? And they fight back against it. Right. Oh, it's amazing. So what has been the effect now that you have brought eyes? Because, you know, the thing about Iran, you talk about, oh, I, you know, I've been thinking about Iran. It's like we're there's such a dearth of information about Iran coming, you know, into American media. I mean, anything that does come in is totally skewed and, and you know, politicized to favor the neocons and all this sort of stuff. So it's like most Americans have no even concept of what Iran is. So it's hard enough to get that information. Now here you are an American uh, at an American media company making something that speaks for the Iranian people. What was their reaction to that? And what has been the, the effect of you bringing American eyes and Iranian eyes to this restart movement? Well, it's been very personal, I guess you could say. I mean, there's a, I have spent a lot of time studying different, traditions of spirituality uh, and theirs is primarily Sufi which is one that I didn't I didn't really look into all that much I knew about the poet Rumi and Hafiz and these are like their teachers and so Sufi is all about love Sufi is about praising God through your actions um, through loving each other through dance through music and uh, so throughout this whole time I've been in contact with about a dozen members plus the leader um, personally, I've fallen in love, uh, not just with their culture and their passion, but they, they are vision for restart. They think of restart as a global thing, uh, not in the sense of globalism, but in the sense of that the entire world is waking up and the entire world wants to be free. And it's like what we were talking about earlier off the air, that there seems to be almost, or on the air, I can't remember, there, seem, there seems to be a civil war globally happening. Mm -hmm. And so what they're saying by restart is the whole world needs to restart. That's kind of what they, one of the things they say. But, but have, has the information that you're putting out, uh, has it been spread around Iran? Is Iran, uh, is, it, is it being Oh, yes. We recently in Iran or censored? Well, we recently did an article on InfoWars where a, there are members of the besiege and there are members of the Revolutionary Guard that are in restart. So there's spies. Wow. And there was a leaked memo recently that was going around the regime that mentioned Infowars in it, and it was uh, it was saying that basically we successfully silenced Restart for two years, and and now they went on a Infowars American media company Infowars for an interview, and now they're getting all kinds of press. Wow! And so the memo was basically saying um, it's urgent if you see anything about this group to silence it and to just stop it right away. And so, yes, it's 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 amazing, and it's also amazing that we seem to be the only outlet covering it. Right. And even some of the people, the comments I read in our videos challenge us saying that we are warmongering. And I, I, these might be trolls. But if you really just look into anyone who looks into Iran, I think, would recognize that they have a rich history of freedom and individualism, probably more so than anyone else. And what they've been putting up with for 40 years is not just extremely oppressive, but it's 
it's kind of new for them. Right. Right. And I know one of the things that you talked about with the the leader that you interviewed was this idea of how similar uh, George Washington was to like, was it like Hammurabi or something? It's like this ancient, ancient Persian leader that uh, his code and, and, you know, what he stood for was like very, a very modern idea of separation in church and state. Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah. Cyrus the Great uh, was, Cyrus, okay. was the first Persian empire. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, you could say it was almost just like the American Constitution, except I believe the only difference was I think the Cyrus Empire, all the freedoms were granted by Cyrus the Great and the Empire, so by the government. Right. They didn't have the sort of Christian underpinning there. Right. So if that would be my one suggestion to restart when they draft their constitution is is make the rights granted by God. Right. Because even if you're an atheist, it's a bit of a brilliant little little check right there. So Right, to say it doesn't come from man, it comes from yeah. God. And that's so interesting because, you know, you have all these connections where people are saying that Trump is Cyrus reborn and all this stuff. Because yeah. Cyrus was a, was a good guy, especially in the Bible, because his rule and his uh, governance actually allowed the Jews to live there uh, and practice their own religion. That was his, you know, contribution was this freedom of religion that he was able to bring out. Really incredible stuff, folks. If you don't understand this it's like info wars we are making a difference we are helping to bring about and helping to support all these people around the world that are engaged in this global revolution and the reawakening of humanity more with greg reese on the other side uh, i'm not a prophet and i don't think i've ever tried making any predictions but um before i left the ashram uh, about a year ago i was telling my good friend there that i worked with i said mark my words next year they're taking the mask off mm -hmm. it's their only it's the only thing they have left is just come out of the closet and be like, this is who we are. And I don't know if we're exactly there yet, but we're close. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they start running on uh, Luciferianism. Right. I would not be surprised. No, I mean, I, I think the, the mask is totally off uh, to the point that, like, all of the stuff that InfoWars has been saying for so long, they're just coming out and being like, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing. I mean, I have I have so many stories here that show exactly that not even in the political realm you have vice uh newspaper that used to be like anti-corruption anti-tyranny sort of style at least now they're showcasing french people who got sterilized to save the world so basically celebrating people who have sterilized themselves they are just they just come out as a cult of death and a cult of anti-humanity and they're basically saying hey accept this or be destroyed and it seems to me like and we've talked about it on the show over and over. They got to a point where Donald Trump was elected. Brexit was happening. They saw their castle crumbling around them. They had two choices. They could either sort of take the take the loss and retreat a little bit and try to regroup and maybe come at it again a different way. Or they could just go pedal to the metal full bore. It looks like they've decided to go pedal to the metal full bore. This is it. Yeah, I would say so. And to me, that tells me to me, that looks like victory for us because that looks like. They have no plan mm. and they're absolutely desperate and they don't know what to do. Um, whereas when you look at uh, Trump's agenda, not just Trump's agenda, but um, what's happening in other places in Brazil, you see a very calculated, calm um, uh, strategy being deployed. Right. Whereas the opponents are freaking out. And what's amazing is that people aren't, like you said, the left is acting exactly how like, not just InfoWars, but even like how David Icke, Mm. He can get out there is talking about and and the people that are asleep still don't see it. It's unbelievable. It is totally crazy. That's what you talk about Luciferianism or, or Satanism. It's like it's it's so bizarre to me, this this juxtaposition between like I almost want to do a skit or something where I'm I'm a socialist candidate. And I'm like, you know, there's so many problems with this world and we we just we need to understand what those problems are. And there's something at the root of it. And we need to figure out what that is and get rid of it. Uh, anyway, here's the new statue to Satan in front of the courthouse, yeah. you know, and it's like they're so blind. It's like here you are literally worshiping Satan. And on the other hand, going, why is everything so backwards? I think I think a huge trick that they're playing that these wizards are playing and they've always played is on our psychology. I was thinking of a movie, a, a movie from the year 2000 called Chopper. And it's a movie about a real Australian criminal who wrote an autobiography in jail. And he's a bit of a brutal person. And there's a scene in that movie where he kills another prisoner. And as the prisoner's dying, he starts experiencing um, sadness and regret and remorse. And he's begging for forgiveness. And he's like, 
he's almost crying and he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. Why'd you make me do that? And when you're watching it, you actually start to feel bad for this bru- brutal mm. killer. Even while the victim is still bleeding out on the floor, you can feel your mind or your heart being like, Oh my God, look, he feels bad. And that's kind of what we're experiencing by the globalists, of the new world order is smiles and apologies mm. While they're doing all, you know, like toxic masculinity is bad. So if you act brutish, Mm -hmm. that's bad. But if you do brutish things with a smile on your face, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Then people like feel bad for you. And it's amazing. It's total manipulation. Total manipulation and wizardry. I love that that, was that Owen Benjamin? Did he start that? I think so. He kind of brought the whole wizardry thing out and he's right. Yeah. And that is exactly what the occult is. The occult is a bunch of nonsense lies like the Jedi mind trick. That's right. basically occult science in a nutshell. The Jedi is, is how to lie to someone and keep a straight face. Yeah, and it's totally – I mean, to me, it's their system is one of death. Their system is one of control, which does not compute with humanity. Humans, like, we, we – I'm sorry, we can't be controlled. I mean, you can to a certain point. If you get the, 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 the chemicals in, if you drain us of our will, if you put in, you know, the, the, the chip – that stops you from doing things that Mark Zuckerberg has created insanity, just insane what's going on in the world right now. So you can do it, but there, I, I have to believe in humanity. I have to believe in the human spirit and believe that when we are faced with this overwhelming evil, that there's a pushback. And so they're trying to build this world on evil. They're building it on sand. It will eventually, whether it's now or later, wash into the ocean if we, destroy it now i hope that we can contain the destruction and the fallout but they can't it it can't continue it can't maintain down the road that we're going right no No. and you know what also on a spiritual note on that is is um rumi who's one of the sufi poets he talks about how uh pain and suffering and broken hearts is the light of truth trying to crack its way inside of you to enlighten you make you wake up and um, a lot of people have claimed that the evildoers today are doing God's work. And I would tend to agree with that. I would tend to say that it's all God. Everything is God. Even Lucifer is God. And so humanity is being given an opportunity where we can enlighten ourselves and learn about how our minds work and learn about how we're manipulated. Exactly. So that we exactly can avoid right. that and hold on to our freedom. 